Hello, my name is Dana. I am an undergraduate research assistant at the Institute of Smart Systems and Artificial Intelligence. Welcome to the second part of the tutorial aimed to introduce you to face detection in computer vision. In this part, we will cover the concept of thermal imagery and learn how to train a face detection model on thermal images in Python. In the previous tutorial, we have discussed the challenges and opportunities associated with face detection in visual images. One of these critical challenges was the problem of illumination caused by the sensitivity of visual cameras to even slight changes in lighting conditions. Because the traditional cameras operate in the visual spectrum and their performance is degraded when the light is dim or when the face is not uniformly illuminated. Since the face is a three-dimensional object, lighting sources from different directions may alter visual appearances. Moreover, light reflected from human faces also varies depending on the skin color and ethnic group. This variability and changes in lighting conditions may cause great difficulties in detecting faces in unconstrained environments. In this tutorial, we introduce thermal imaging as the most promising solution in dealing with illumination challenges. Now, when we have a motivation to explore thermal imagery, let's define it first. Thermal imaging is the process of transferring emitted infrared radiation into visible images that represent the spatial distribution of temperature differences in an image captured by a thermal camera. It uses the infrared subband in the electromagnetic spectrum to acquire illumination invariant Im images. This allows infrared sensors to operate in absolute darkness. This sensor property makes thermal imaging especially interesting for applications with high variance in lighting conditions. Currently, the applications of thermal imagery depend on its two main properties, which are illumination invariance and the ability to extract unique physiological features. The former property opens the door for surveillance, target acquisition, night vision. And the latter property allows thermal imagery to be extensively used in medicine and biometrics, for example, fever detection, affective state analysis, and emotion detection. There are many databases designed for phase detection in the visual spectrum, but only a few relevant thermal phase databases have been introduced so far. Here is a list of some commonly used thermal phase databases. IRIS, IRIS M3, NVIE datasets were taken in controlled conditions under different illumination conditions. IRIS M3 also contains natural outdoor illumination images. However, these datasets do not have annotations for bounding boxes. It is also important to mention the presence of visual pairs in the VISTH NVIE datasets. Even though they do not have bounding boxes, the presence of aligned Visual pairs makes it possible to automatically annotate the thermal images by applying the state-of-the-art phase detection model to their visual pairs. However, this process might require manual corrections. RWTH ICAN is a dataset that was captured in a controlled environment and also doesn't have bounding boxes. However, it has 68 facial landmarks. Another way to automatically obtain bounding boxes is to use these landmarks to get the facial region. Finally, Speaking Faces dataset is a large-scale publicly available dataset that was collected by our institution. It contains voice commands and streams of visible thermal image sequences consisting of ethnically diverse, gender-balanced 142 subjects. It was designed to overcome the limitations of the existing multimodal datasets. The video streams in the dataset were aligned to minimize the pixel-to-pixel -pixel alignment errors between the visual and thermal images. This allows for automatic annotation of thermal images using facial bounding boxes extracted from their visual pairs. Moving on to the phase detection algorithms for thermal images, there are two main approaches for this task. The first one is to adapt machine learning based algorithms for phase detection in the visual spectrum by training them on thermal images. These are the example of classical phase detection algorithms transferred from the visual domain. For example, Viola Jones is a well-known algorithm that has been tested for facial detection in the visible domain. It is fast but has been outperformed by current deep learning methods in both accuracy and the detection rate. There are also deep learning models for thermal phase detection that were trained using transfer learning. For example, Faster RCNN is a deep learning network based on a regional proposal network and is known as very highly efficient but computationally costly. 
and YOLO V2 is a deep learning model that can predict multiple bounding boxes and object classes in real time. The second one is a more specific approach that is based on an image processing algorithm and uses specific properties of facial images in the thermal domain. For example, local temperature maxima in the eye area or the fact that human bodies usually have higher temperature radiation than the background. In this case, we can mention eye corner detection and projectile profile approach. In general, if enough thermal datasets are available, machine learning based algorithms can outperform the models designed specifically for thermal images. In this tutorial, we are going to focus on a simpler approach. We will learn how to train a classical machine learning based phase detection algorithm, histogram of oriented gradients followed by SVM provided by the LIP on thermal images. As we have discussed earlier, to train the work introduced for visual images, we need to have an appropriate training thermal phase database with annotations. For that, we will use our SFTL54 dataset. It is a dataset constructed from our former Speaking Faces dataset that was captured in a controlled environment. This dataset contains 2,556 images of 142 subjects captured from nine different positions. Most importantly, it has annotations for 54 landmarks, bounding boxes, and aligned visual pairs. Each subject participated in two trials recorded on different days. In each trial, the subject participated in two sessions. In the first session, participants sat silent and still. In the second session, the participants read a series of short texts displayed on the screen. To construct the SFTL54 dataset, we used images from the second session because it contains more diverse facial expressions. The link to this dataset is available at the GitHub repository indicated below. Now let's proceed to the demonstration. You can find all necessary code for this tutorial on our GitHub page, more specifically Thermal Facial Landmarks Detection Repository. In order to download the repository, you will need to run the following command on the command prompt or terminal, and also you will need to have these libraries installed on your machine. If you don't have them yet, you can install them by watching the following tutorials. As we have mentioned before, we will be training the leap phase detector on the SFTL54 dataset, and you can download the dataset freely by clicking to the link right here. And also you can skip the following commands because uh, these commands are made for generating training, validation, and testing XML files. However, we already provide them in the dataset folders that you will find in Google Drive. Now let us proceed to the code itself. The code is called trainDeletePhaseDetector.py. When you open it, you will see that for training phase detector, you will need to provide two arguments. The first one is passed to the training XML file that contains the path to the images and bounding box coordinates, and similarly passed to the validation XML file. For training, we will use a simple object detector function, the implementation of histogram of oriented gradients followed by linear SEM method. This function comes with several options that have reasonable default values. Let me briefly go through these options. Detection window size corresponds to the size of the sliding window. This is the approach where a trained classifier looks at every image patch and determines whether or not there is a face in that window. Epsilon stands for the stopping epsilon. Smaller values lead to the more accurate detections but longer training process. With the options at left right image flips, uh, we can tell the trainer to train asymmetric detector as the faces are left or right symmetric. This helps to double dataset size for training. However, in this case, we set it to false because our dataset already contains mirrored images. So, option C stands for the SVMC parameter. As we discussed earlier, the trainer is a kind of support vector machine and therefore has this parameter. Bigger C helps to fit training data better, but might lead to overfitting. You should find the best C value empirically by testing your trained model on a test set of images. 
try different values to see which one works best for you. Through upsample limit, you can specify how many times your model needs to upsample the image while looking for faces. And through number of threads, you can specify the number of CPU cores of your computer for the fastest training. And uh, options bigger both specifies whether you want to display the processing information on the screen. Here, train simple object detector initiates the actual training. You will find the final detector in the delete phase detector.svm. Uh, you can see here you will need to provide the path to the training XML file that contains the list of the images and contains bounding box coordinates. Finally, when we obtain a detector, the function test simple object detector tests it on a training set. You will need to provide a path to the detector that you have obtained and also pass to the training XML file. It will output the precision recall and average precision scores. In order to check whether the model is not overfitting, run the same function test simple object detector, but providing valid pass to the validation XML file instead of training XML file. This is done because the model hasn't seen the images from the validation set yet, and this will help us to identify whether the model is overfitting or not. Now let's try to initiate the training. Uh, so firstly, to train the leap phase detector, you will need to locate the dataset folders that you have downloaded from the Google Drive inside the thermal facial and mass detection repositories that you have downloaded from the uh, GitHub. So this is how this, re this repository looks like when you download it and inside you, you should place the dataset folder. So uh, to initiate the training, just run the following command uh, where you provide the path to the training XML file right here and the path to the validation XML file. And remember to start the training from the following directory. The process usually takes around 4-5 minutes. So as you can see the training process has been completed and we can find all, all scores right here. For me the training took about 15 minutes but it also depends on your computer. Uh, now when you check the thermal facial and mass detection directory you will see that the models folder appeared and inside it uh, you will find the phase detector itself. Now it's time to test this delete phase detector.svm using the script called delete phase detector.py. You can find it on our github page as well. In the same repository just find the delete phase detector.py and open it. And here, as you can see, for, to run this script, you will need to provide three arguments, pass to the folder with the images where you want to detect faces, pass to the pre-trained model that you have just obtained after the training, and upsample value. This is how many times your model needs to upsample the image while looking for faces. Firstly, it loads the face detector that you provided as an argument. Then it grabs the, the path to the image and using pass from the immutils library saves the path to the images from the folder you provided to the list. Using a for loop, we iterate through the list of paths to the image and read each image using the function imread from OpenCV library. Uh, now here the image is resized because uh, we trained the model on the image with a resolution of 464 by 348 pixels. Therefore, if you provide the image with higher resolution, the model will not detect faces. Moreover, the image size has an impact on inference speed. To maintain the faster prediction, we set a smaller image size. Then it converts the image to grayscale and passes it to the detector function that returns the bounding boxes. As you may note, you will also need to provide a sample value as an argument right here. And 
Finally, using the for loop to iterate through predictions, bounding boxes, we can convert the delete rectangle into OpenCV bounding box. And using the rect to bb function from face utils and using rectangle function from OpenCV, we visualize these boxes on the copy of the image. Finally, again, using OpenCV, we visualize this image with the detected bounding box. Now let's try to run this script, providing all necessary arguments. For that, we will run the following command. So as an, as an argument here, you provide the path to the images and the path to the model that you have just obtained after the training. So the upsample value is already set to one. There is no need to provide it as argument when calling this script. Now let's press enter. Here the result appeared right here as you can see. Here you just can iterate through the images to see all the results. You can try this tutorial yourself. Thank you for watching.